Good afternoon, I'm Bridget Taylor and this is Currency Wars. Today I'm joined by Andre Ehrenstein, he's from r &B, and we're going to have a look at what's happening on the wires. But the big headlines in the, the last week have really been around South Africa and the offshore uh, developments. There's more evidence supporting that there's a divestment trend from the South African shores. And this is a concerning feature for the RAND. Data released by the United Nations Conference for Trade and Development, UNCTAD, shows that local companies increased their investments abroad last year. This outward FDI flow amounts to $6.9 billion, and this is from a $6.6 .6 billion number in 2013. The data shadows that of the Saab's quarterly bulletin. Meanwhile, the South African Rand traded between 12.09 and as high as 12.58 in the last few weeks. This amidst both the global and domestic news. The cross rate saw the Euro Rand trading from a high of 14.08 back down to current levels around 13.60. Meanwhile, the Pound Rand continues to trade around the 19 level, trading currently around 19.04 from a high of 19.44. Meanwhile, locally and domestically, the price increase that has been front and centre for Eskom of as much as 25% on its own won't be enough to lift the credit rating from Eskom. This is from a junk status uh, that the credit rating agency's Moody's, which cuts the assessment later last year, has assessed um, Eskom's outlook at. The higher prices will only add 20 to 25 billion rand to the Eskom annual revenue. This is much less than the annual cash shortfall of almost 50 billion rand. Meanwhile, the recent debacle surrounding the Sudanese president Omar al-Bashir will be a concern for foreign investors. The South African government chose to defy both the ICC's international court order and the domestic courts. The High Court in Pretoria has now invited prosecutors to probe the state's role in allowing al-Bashir to leave the country in June. Abroad, the big news surrounding the Greek exit and Greek and EU finance ministers hit a new impasse yesterday as creditors accused Athens of failing to compromise despite a looming default next week. And this risks them bouncing out of the Eurozone. Meanwhile, the European Union leaders are due to uh, meet in Brussels later today and Greek will have to put an agreed measure through its parliament by Monday so that some of the other Eurozone parliaments can endorse the deal and unblock these aids funds. However, if Greece misses this payment and is in fact declared default to the IMF, it could trigger a bank run, capital controls and an eventual Greek exit from the Eurozone. And this can show that the membership of the currency is not as irrevocable as its founders had intended. Right, now that we've seen the lay of the land, I'd like to welcome Andre Ehrenstein from RMB. Thank you very Hi, much, Andre. So the big news, obviously, is around the Greek exit. Uh, you know, European leaders arriving as we speak, and I think that, uh, if anything, there was a sleepless night held uh, for those from Athens. So talk to me about your view with regards to this. I mean, there's, it's, there's quite a lot of support for the Greek exit, and then there's a lot of support for non-Greek exit p pertaining to this kind of contagion effect. So just talk to me about your view around that. Yeah. <laughs> I think the Greeks have become exper experts at kicking cans down the road, and mm. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I think a deal will form and, and, and it will go through. I think the ECB and other European parliaments are quite concerned in terms of the unintended consequences mm. in terms of, a Greek, you know, of Greece leaving the Eurozone. Because that paves the way for others when, when, the, when the going's not so good for them. Well, this is the thing. I mean, we talk <coughs> about Greece only really contributing 2% of the banking sector. They're very, very small as an economy within the Eurozone. But as you mentioned, I think it is the contagion effect, not necessarily on runs on banks or necessarily as a, a kickback in terms of the European economy. It's more that sentiment around is this really working and now there is a way to exit this thing and that is a concern so what is your view with regards to the other weaker states around europe no i think when you look at the other states around europe they're all held together together by coalition governments mm. uh, some some are stronger than others but by and large you know they're coalition governments and and those things don't you know they, they don't tend to to stay as strong when when the times are tough and when there's an alternative and a viable alternative yeah, that's when you see the divisions forming. So do you think that we're getting Merkel's becoming a headmistress <laughs> and they've got the funds, they're prepared to give them to the Greeks as long as they curtail certain of their spending requirements and they do in fact meet them. So in other words, it's my way or the highway. I'm telling you, I've got the money and you will um, parlay or we yeah, will I not pay you. I think it will be a compromise on both parts when it comes to the 11th hour. Mm. You know, 
tax increases in Greece are inevitable, but also you know, the additional revenue that you gain from increasing tax rates at very high levels is marginal. Mm. You know, so you know, that increases, yes. Luxury taxes increase, yes. They will have to get to an agreement, and they will get to an agreement, and Greece will not be allowed to go when it comes to, when push comes to shove. Well, if we look at the reaction on the currency, I mean, it hasn't deteriorated markedly. I mean, we've seen it sitting at 112. It's not a huge deterioration based on the fact that there's so much push that in fact, this may be the Greek exit. So the market's almost telling you that it's an unlikely scenario, um, although there is that risk. And if you look at the underlying uh, optionality on the back of that, it will speak to the, co obviously there is a concern that this may in fact uh, come no, to sure, that. No, sure, but I think when you look at it, it's, the, it's a long period of time that, mm. that that will need to that you're looking at you know parliaments have to approve plans they have to be implemented you know we're talking about a timeline that's you know that's probably six months down the road mm -hmm. yes there will be bridging finance that gets put in place you know eventual default or restructuring does it count as a default you know these mm -hmm. are technical issues that need to be ironed out. But the, the exchange rate is telling you that it's probably going to be, uh, there's going to be a there's solution. There's going to be a reached. solution, yes. Correct. So I think that that's possibly the risk, is that there isn't a solution risk, uh, reached, and that's where we see the volatility on the currency. So let's bring ourselves back to uh, the South African economy. I think it's been quite interesting. I mean, we've had a lot of, unfortunately, negative news wires, particularly around um, this ICC decision with regards to, um, you know, the Sudanese president, etc. How do you feel with regards to the sentiment around South Africa? Africa regarding um, you know the Eskom debacle we've got a lot of news wire around people um, nurse etc commenting on the expected increases on the Eskom tariff hikes how they are managing that entity we look at Madupi only going live in 21 these are all projects that are taking a hell of a long time to come online and yet these increases continue and in fact if anything that um, hole is just getting bigger and bigger because of the maintenance issues no sure I think when you look at it by and large our fundamental are, are not great. Hmm. You know, you can take the electricity shortages. Yes, electricity is the backbone of our, of any economy, and if you're in a shortage of it, yeah, it's going to you know it's going to hurt the economy. It's going to increase prices. It's going to add to to basically a stagflation environment. But the question that I want to ask you is, I mean, we look at all of the fundamental issues in South Africa, and yes, you're right, I mean, we talk about this ad nauseum. However, the issue here is it's really getting to crisis points. It's getting to a place where there's real, real crisis by virtue of the fact that we desperately need electricity. We don't have another resource. And we potentially could go black on the grid. So now we're in a situation where uh, we want to hike prices. That's the answer. That's the solution. But the real question is, are these peristatals being managed effectively and what is the effect on the economy? And that's really the questions that we should be asking with regards to taking this economy forward. If we're looking at the foreign direct investments, South African private sector telling you we are investing offshore. Why? Because it's more viable for us. No, the local, when you look at the local corporates, their balance sheets have been flush with cash. There's been no, no investment locally for a long period of time. And yes, whatever cash has been made locally has been invest, invested abroad. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, shareholders r demand a return on capital. Of course. And, and if you can't get it locally, you get it abroad. But you know, that's, and that's the thing, and it's those hindrances to doing business, and those are the issues that really need to be addressed around, you know, yes, we've got political issues. Yes, we've got um, some of the, the arguments that we've had around uh, constitutional rights and et cetera, but these fundamental underlying issues need to be resolved. Because if we look at the RAND, I mean, the RAND's remaining around that 12 level, and it's almost like we've said before on the show, it's like a frog in boiling water. You know, we were trading at six to the dollar, then we traded at eight to the dollar. Now, then we traded at 10 to the dollar, and everybody said, oh, this is terrible, this is horrible. But we forget, we are now trading at 12 and yes those moves of 1204 to 1258 are as a function of other global issues etc but that what it's telling you is that we boiling we, we're getting hotter it's not that we're getting cooler Andre and that's what what concerns me is we say yeah but we know about the fundamental issues in South Africa but the reality is that they have to get sorted out because otherwise that boil point continues no sure and I think when it comes down to the voters the voters have to determine that mm. you know you look at abroad the investors are looking for for returns over a one or two year period yeah. and the the reforms and, and the structural issues that you're talking about they manifest over a very long period of time mm. so you know you talk about in five years time we're going to be sitting here you know, and still saying the same thing you know yes our fundamentals are weak the US economy is, is starting to grow the dollar is going to remain strong it and it's a, three, to dollar. That's your it's a three it's a three to five year cycle when you're talking about the dollars dollar strength and I think that's what we'll see so mm. 
you know, over a longer, over long run or long term, yes, the rand will weaken against the dollar, against major currencies, because I think global growth over time will will improve, and that's going to help our fundamentals. But we need to have we need to have the structures in place. We need to have the electricity to support the growth. We need to have reforms, and we need to have efficiencies that that support growth. Correct, exactly. And that's or an, mitigate and that's, that deterioration. You know, and, that's, and these are these are policy changes that need to be put into effect and now. and manifest over a long period of time. Yes, but they must be put in place now because, like absolutely. you say, it takes a long time to roll out. No, so absolutely. We, I'm going to bring you to put it on the block soon. Um, we, c we are now going to look at where we're going to pull out the big guns, and I'm going to ask Andre to give us his view for the week ahead. Uh, we've had quite a controversial conversation, but I think it's interesting based on the fact that we're all South Africans, and this does impact us on a daily basis. Right, so give us your views. Uh, look at what we can expect. Just quickly give us an overview in terms of dollar rand predominantly because that's going to drive the crosses and then what your view is on the cross rates. Yeah, I think we're going we're gonna to look at a range of about 12 to 12.20 on dollar rand. Uh, you know, that's really going to be a function of, of what gets determined in, in the Eurozone. But I think 12 is, is quite a big level mm -hmm. and you continue to buy dips in my view. Okay. Uh, whether it be a 12 or 11.95, 11.90, you know, we've got a lot more volatility. So, you know, levels tend to break and overshoot, but come back very quickly. Okay. So, you know, that's, that's, I think, the range for dollar rand. Euro rand, I think, will, will need to break the 13.50 level. If we do, we could see back down to, to 13.30. Mm -hmm. Sterling rand, again, 19 the figure. If we go through that, I think we could see some some major strength coming through across. But I think what we what we see is that the crosses have actually strengthened quite a lot, mm. whereas dollar rand hasn't really moved. So if we do have signs of strength, it's going to be a rand move as yes. opposed to a dollar move, and that's going to drive the crosses lower. So my view over the week is, is tendencies to to be stronger, but. Buy dips. Okay. So this trading strategy for the week ahead, look to buy dips. The RAND remains on a weaker bias um, due to the local fundamentals, but the offshore debacle obviously will have some impact on the cross rates. The big level to watch is that 12 level on the dollar RAND. Um, and Andre suggests that you buy the dips towards that 12 level. You know, buy the dips towards 13.50 on the euro and towards 19 on the pound, looking for those weaker levels, particularly if you're an importer. You are welcome to contact us in the week ahead uh, for any of your comments or your questions to either at CNBC Africa, hashtag Currency Wars 410, or myself at Bridget R. Taylor for your personal responses to the FX markets. Until next week, keep your ears to the ground and good luck in the trenches.